Let's start out with a very simple statement, which I'll keep repeating until you get rather bored with it, but you'll remember it and carry it away with you. Satori is a natural, simple, easy, obvious, and continuous state. Anything that brings you out of Satori, we are going to call ego program. Anything in you that's the downer program that takes you out of the natural, simple, easy, obvious state of Satori, for purposes of discussion here, we're going to call ego or ego program. That's not the usual definition of ego that you're acquainted with. It's not the definition that the youngsters use when they say somebody went on an ego power trip, for example or when the psychoanalysts talk about ego. These are different entities. In my terminology, we call these downer programs or ego programs. When you're in the natural, simple, easy, obvious state, and suddenly you're not in that state, you have to examine how you got out of the state. What brought you down? And it's your responsibility, nobody else you allow somebody else to bring you down, then you are faking it. You are pretending that out there is a force that operates inside you. And this is nonsense. You are centered and grounded. Literally, it would be extremely difficult for somebody else to bring you out, short of hitting you over the head or some violent means. This is the whole basis of what I'm going to be saying today. I've already given you the talk now. Now we can go on and complicate it. Now, what do I mean by grounding and centering? I mean the same thing that we mean at Esalen or at any of the other growth centers. When we say that you are in your body you are of your body, and your body is on the planet accomplishing some sort of a job or mission. Now, you can feel this in the here and now, the instantaneous grounding and centering, by proper exercises and getting a consciousness of your whole body. Before one can successfully do a spiritual trip, without tumbling in outer space and getting dizzy, one has to do the grounding and centering. If you're going to move out from this planet, be sure you're well trained on how to keep a part of you going here while you go somewhere else. And that part of you, obviously, is your physical body. In the disciplines that I've been exposed to, you have really have to solve what, in the old-fashioned terminology, were called ego fixations. In the new terminology, we say these are the beginnings of the ego program, of the downer program. These can start anywhere in your life. When you were a child, and you were threatened, the continuity of your body was threatened, or the continuity of your being was threatened, you may have made certain decisions suddenly, instantaneously, in order to survive. And what you, the child mind and brain conceived of as the necessity for survival. As an adult, you can go back and look at those instances, at those fixation points, and correct them. This is well known from psychoanalytic work, and it's well known also in the esoteric schools. Part of the discipline is finding these points at which your ego was created, the ego in the sense of the downers. So you can have a group, say, that does ego reduction on one another. But ego reduction in this sense is not knocking you down at all. It's finding out where your sensitivities lie 
and allowing you to get rid of them. Okay, now let's get to Satori itself. What do I mean by this term? Well, in the school in Chile, where I spent seven months working with a group of about 53 Americans, Satori is given various levels, assigned various levels. And the Gurdjieffian vibration level numbers are used to designate these levels. This is an arbitrary scale going by factors of two. And it's an inverse scale. The highest Satori has the smallest number. The lowest Satori has the highest number. So if you wish to think of it this way, these vibration levels are wavelengths of sound in centimeters in air. So at the highest level of Satori is the shortest wavelength or the highest frequency. So Satori 3 would be 3 centimeter wavelength of sound in air, and hence about 30,000 cycles per second. So we'll leave that analog. That's only one analog for the vibration levels of Gurdjieff and go on to the description of the Satori's themselves. So what we want to do is attenuate all the signals from the consensus reality, the body trips, and so on, to the lowest possible level and so that we can then pay attention to the signals coming from these other places, from other people, from other species on this planet, from the uh, other characters in the cosmos, whatever it is. And that's why I say you're limited by your concepts as to what you can do here. You can receive information, which is totally meaningless to you, because it's in dimensions that you haven't yet experienced. And the whole business of moving into these places and accepting them and then exploring them is a very difficult thing without the proper cognitional and computational equipment. He asks, if you find yourself in minus three or minus six, are there ways of getting out of it without a guide? I'd say you better have a guide. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, somebody who's really tuned in on this. I got into these places alone the first time, and, and it's, uh, I wouldn't advise the way I did it. It's, it's kind of scary. If you are capable of it, and you aren't completely shattered by being in this negative place, yes, you by experience of having been there and come out, you can do it again. If you have one experience with a guide, then you can do it again. But you have to store it. The requirement is that you stay conscious, totally conscious all the time of what's happening. And the Sufis, for example, say you must reach levels of awareness, levels of consciousness. The awake man is one that goes through the negative experiences, stores it all in a conscious way, and remembers it. If you don't do that, if you cop out at any point and go un unconscious and can't remember, you can't do this. Well, if you're a trampoline-type personality, yes. You have to have the agony and the ecstasy. But once you can move through that, that's a transition phase. You can then move into a place where you can stay neutral and go up only. Now, there, by happenstance, you may be forced negative. But it, at least it's not an ego program that's bringing you down from within. There may be a disaster in which a brick falls off a building and knocks you out or something. You wake up in the hospital. The dark night of the soul. I don't know whether it's necessary or not. Some of the modern kids don't seem to have it. But my generation, it's very common. She asked that I comment on the chakras and Kundalini. Uh, there was a historical note at the beginning of that. Uh, the chakras and Kundalini are fine if you know what you're doing. But, for instance, read Kundalini by Gopi Krishna, and you'll find that there are uh, kind of negative difficulties you can get into with this technique. And he illustrates them very well in his book. It's a first-hand account of what happened to him. The, there are some things that go on in this uh, biological self-programming system known as Kundalini. But again, I would prefer to have some additional theoretical structures over and above the Kundalini 
as an isolated thing. I don't think the Kundalini can exist, Kundalini approach can exist in a vacuum as a pure kind of thing anymore. We have to bring it in relation to all the others. He asked, what are the implications of what I'm saying for psychotherapy? I thought I made that clear. Uh, mental health, in my view, is an ability to navigate in these spaces. If you don't have this ability, uh, you need what used to be called psychotherapy. But with the view towards freeing you up so that you can navigate in these spaces, psychotherapy is just another name for techniques for ego reduction, if you wish, in this formulation. Really, I don't know. I haven't died yet. <laughs> what happens after physical death? I can give you a theory about what happens. In this formulation, uh, the essence just pulls out and doesn't come back to the vehicle, that's all. Well, the so-called essential memories are taken out and, and kind of passed on somewhere else. The information that's been gained through that vehicle is not lost in this formulation. Reincarnation fit into this formulation? Well, this is the formulation of reincarnation. <laughs> Carrying, as it were, you take out the essential memories out of the computer and put them over here somewhere else in another uh, storage mechanism some sort, either human or non-human or, you know, solid state, whatever. <laughs> to whom are those memories now available? Other essences. Uh, the trouble is that they all depend on one another and they depend on your attitude and how much work you're willing to put in. In Chile, each of us, you know, gave up our jobs, went down there and spent all our time on it. Well, I was there working for eight months and the rest of the group are going on to 10. Uh, this is, you know, seven days a week. You're not thinking or doing much else but the trip. Now, half the group could afford this, the other half couldn't, so there's a kind of a mutual support that has to go on here. It's a, uh, it's rugged to do this, but if you're going to do the kinds of things that we were trying to do, as it were, then you should devote this much time to it. Now, if you have a job and you have to stay nailed down to a job, so you have less time to devote to it, the same kinds of activities will probably pay off in the end. It depends on where you are, how strong the ego programs are, and so on. Each person is a special case. As I said at one point in Chile to somebody that asked, uh, you know, we're all in a big room, and there are a thousand doors out of it. All you have to do is be able to open one of those doors. And from that point on, you're in in these spaces you can navigate. So Oscar was showing us a thousand different ways of doing it. Uh, number 501 would work for me, but not for the next guy. So it is a very complicated, at present, we do not know direct pathways. So there's this sort of a shotgun attempt to try everything. Well, it still works. You know, he, he throws out methods that don't work, and he still he has still a thousand methods. There are group processes, for example, which can get you into these states, as the Sufis and the uh, dervishes have known for many years, hundreds of years. Uh, there are individual work, as the yoga is shown. And I don't want to get into too much of this because it's available, it's in the literature. If you read all the Sufi literature, especially the book of the dervishes, for example, uh, you, you can learn some of the older terminologies, the older roots to these same spaces. I don't know of any modern broad book that covers, catalogs all of these methods. And that's a lack in the present literature. Talent is just a, a situation in which you have no explanation for why the person is able to be, be in these places. And you're given that person and you haven't really investigated it. What you may find is that the people of talent have never been exposed to downer programs that have been embedded in their computer. They've just brought through from childhood by luck or by design of the parents or whatever it is. And they just have not absorbed this kind of program. Well, theoretically, everybody has a potential. And if you can dig away at these programs and get rid of them, sure. I expect to see this taking place in the next 10 years. It would be very common, and we'll wonder what all the fuss was about. 
It all depends on your interpretation. Uh, that, that was not a bad trip. The two guides that I came on in six, when I was very close to death, I was in coma for many hours, and I, my body was a painful place to be, so I left it, as it were. So, and these two entities said, you know, your body's okay. You can go back. Your time hasn't come to be here, but you can come back here anytime you want to. Now, they didn't say those words, but they transmitted that information by whatever the information transmittal mechanism is on six. It seems to be a direct read-in into the computer, as it were, without the use of words by some sort of a coding mechanism that's much more basic than our verbal levels. Positive and negative is what we put on them. There are entities, and there are neutral ones that we can make look evil or make look uh, super good. When I was seven years old, these two guides, uh, I closed in the typical Catholic angel kind of thing. And they wrapped their wings around me and all that because I was a little guy and I was frightened. But when I was 21, they became just points in a, in a well-lighted, uh, loving space. Projection of your ego, as you spoke down earlier today, and what would be this positive? <laughs> It could still be a projection. It could still be a program in my computer creating as if. However, uh, it doesn't have that feel. When you're there, you have this absolute certainty that this is a reality outside yourself and that you're not creating it. Now, this may be an illusion, too. I don't know. Uh, she's talking about the positive and negative bothering her. This is a, it's, it's, it's a dichotomy. But it's a dichotomy that's built into our computer. There are systems in our brain, for instance, which when stimulated, give rise to subjective feelings of pain or of fear or of anger. And the direct experience of that is something you want to avoid. So therefore, we label it negative. There are other systems in the brain which, when stimulated, make you feel pleasure over the whole body, or pleasure in regard to the psychic apparatus, whatever, or sexual pleasure, or more specific kinds of pleasure. And those we label positive because you want more of them. You get attached to these. The position that you have to get into with the Satori's is that you neither have a version, negative, view of them, nor are you attached to them, or you can't get there. In other words, you have to start in 48 and then move into these areas. And then you have the experience of a positive thing. But it's not the desire for the positive thing that gets you there. Is that clear? This is the old stuff. This is in Patanjali. It's in all the yoga texts and so on. Detachment is the way they call it. We say neutral, okay? Not much different. Well, you have to know the state exists and uh, work on it and find out where you're attached and where, you know, where the aversions are and where the attachments are. You know, you can, you can shuck off, say, all of the treasure of this particular trip, ownership and all this sort of thing, but eventually you can get back to that and say, okay, that's the game you have to play here. Uh, this business of throwing away property and so on is, is nonsense when you finally, finally are fully developed. You don't need to do that. Now, you may have to do it as a transition thing in order to teach yourself what you really desire, what your sort of your meta desires really are. 